Uh, ask uh, someone who's also, of course, uh, been uh, uh, sort of uh, very, very bullish on markets uh, for a while. Vikas Kemani is founder of Carnelian Asset Managers and Advisors. Vikas, good afternoon. Good to have you with us here. Thanks for your time. Prashant, this side. Uh, you, first of all, you want to, I don't know if you ever thought, 50 done, 50 more to go. Uh, that's, the, that's the bull market. I mean, of course, uh, we're not nitpicking here, but uh, would you agree with the sentiment? And second, uh, and more importantly, uh, what are you doing, Vikas? Are you fully invested? Are, you, uh, are the new Amritkal fund, I mean, uh, what's the status? Give us an update because we are catching up after a while. Hi, Prashant. It's always good to chat with you. Uh, so I think um, I have continuously uh, said that we are in the middle of a very, very structural, transformative, unprecedented growth story called India. And from a medium term to long term perspective, there's a great you know, potential. Uh, we've chatted that in the next 10, 12 years, Nifty can potentially go to one lakh. Uh, that's the kind of you know journey we are embarking on. Our corporate earnings are you know expanding, growing. Um, you know, so whenever this kind of transformation phase happens, I mean the best thing is to remain invested. Nobody can predict, nobody can you know plan short-term corrections. They will always come when you don't expect, and they will always come from sources when you don't you know don't imagine. We all can guess, we can all guesstimate that what will what can lead to corrections. And a lot of people have been waiting for corrections. We don't think that you know corrections would come structurally. Uh, there could be short-term corrections, which nobody can predict, but structurally, I don't see there is a reason why there will be deep corrections. And uh, people who've been calling out that markets are expensive uh, are approaching from mean to reversion kind of uh, uh, mindset. Uh, but whenever there is any economies into transformative phase, mean to reversion doesn't work. And those are the people who, once you call out that it will correct, they have to continue to remain invested into that narrative. And hence, a lot of people have been in this camp that markets will correct, markets are expensive. But frankly speaking, I don't think markets are expensive. And so whenever you are in such a transformative phase and we are able to find companies, great companies with a great, great growth tailwind, uh, you know, over the next three to five years. So there is no case for sitting on cash. Uh, we are fully invested, uh, maybe one two percent cash, which is part of the you know normal you know course. But generally speaking, we are fully invested, and we are able to find ideas where we find risk reward in invested uh, in investing in them. And as you know that we don't buy stocks at any price. We believe in buying quality stock at a reasonable price, and we are able to uh, find good ideas. And again, since you asked on Amrit Kal, just to give an idea. Our Amrit Kaur portfolio, which is fully invested, the earning growth over the next two years is 25% of the portfolio. The ROE is 19%. Debt to equity is 0.1. My peg ratio is around 0.9. Beta is 0.6. So you're basically growing faster than the index, stronger than the index, and cheaper than the index. So you're faster, stronger, cheaper. If you can build this portfolio, I don't see any way, any, any, uh, case for sitting on cash. And that is our consistent view and we continue to believe in that. Okay, that, that's quite phenomenal. I was just going to ask you about the earnings projection in that target of uh, you know the Nifty going to 1 lakh Vikas. Well, that's astounding, right? Because if you just do the math, if, if you expect earnings in the market to compound at 15%, then I think we talk about the market doubling every five years. So 25,000 becomes 50,000, 50 becomes 1 lakh. But I mean, you're saying in your case, you're expecting your portfolio companies to compound earnings at 25%. That, that's phenomenal. So I know you can't talk stocks, but give us a peek into uh, the sort of companies that you're, you're looking at, that you're comfortable you know, adding positions to uh, or buying afresh now uh, within the themes that you like. For instance, you've been a big bull on manufacturing, on the whole Make in India drive. Uh, so maybe some more granular hints uh, on the kind of businesses that you like. Absolutely. And the fact that, you know, your show's name is also Alpha Manager and our job is to generate Alpha. So we have to grow faster than the market. Otherwise, there's no uh, role for us. Uh, then people will put money into index, right? So so obviously, we have to work hard to A, enhance and earnings growth and B, reduce the, uh, you know, risk uh, from, a, from a debt to equity perspective or have the quality of the portfolio perspective. And that is what we do. You know, enhance return or enhance earning and reduce uh, risk. And, uh, you know, so we have, you know, curated this portfolio is across uh, five broad themes, manufacturing, consumption, financials, uh, infrastructure and services. Uh, right now, we're significantly overweight in manufacturing and consumption. Uh, consumption, we have invested first time in last five years. We think now the risk reward 
uh, of investing has become visible. And again, when we are saying consumption does not mean we are talking about broad baskets, but you know, when we started, we bought companies like Dabur, we bought companies like LT4, we bought, so we want to believe in very, very niche kind of company where we think that we can get visibility with kind of high confidence on 20, 25% kind of earning growth. And that's where we do. And same thing, I think in manufacturing, but manufacturing is very wide subject, but within that you will have, you know, pharmaceutical, auto components, you know, chemicals, uh, you know, it's a very wide, uh, you know, defense, um, you know, EMS player, so fairly large basket. But within that, you know, we are reasonably overweight on manufacturing and we are able to identify companies with, with the, uh, the kind of characteristics I spoke about. All right. Uh, hi, Vikas. What about the IPO market? I've seen some participation from you all out there as well, uh, you know, and uh, with good reason, uh, Interact Building Products, I think, uh, you know, you, you all uh, participated in that. So tell us a couple of more themes that you like, and you made a bit of an exception. You named a couple of stocks. We like that. Go ahead. No, I think so. The thing is that you know we, of course, that is pipe your market or 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 you know secondary market doesn't matter. Uh, we love you know because uh, when companies go public, as long as the you know it's a good quality business, good management, and comes at a reasonable price. And the name you mentioned, I think, was at a reasonable price, and you know we liked it, and hence we it's a structural play. Uh, you know, in, in India's manufacturing theme, and hence, hence we kind of picked it up. So it, it's for us, IPO or secondary makes no difference. For us, the risk reward of trade or investment makes a lot of difference. And that we evaluate irrespective of anything on a, on a standalone basis. Uh, within a sector also, even if a positive view does not mean that we like every stock, we have to still find ideas. Within manufacturing, we don't like many stocks which have kind of way past their risk reward framework, but then you have to go back again, check, you know, what falls into your risk reward framework. And, and that's how we build portfolio. Mm. Uh, no, I got that. So just uh, <clears throat> because, uh, is, is it possible to share two, three ideas which you've owned long and which you continue to, uh, go, which, which you're going to continue to own for a long time? So there's no, uh, you know, there's no, there's no problem talking about just you to use an ex ex as examples of that portfolio. Uh, you know, w w where you think uh, there's enough confidence, and you know, that 25% earnings Skagger growth story will play out. Look, some of the are it's public uh, information. I can surely talk about some of the names we own. Uh, mm. You know, Container Corporation. We own Dabur. We own SRF. Uh, we own LT Food. You know, we own, of course, Aditya Birla Capital, very large position for us. All these are public, hence I'm happy to share. There's not a problem. Uh, so these are some of the our top, you know, five, six holdings I just mentioned. But, you know, uh, you know, we own about 25, 30 names. Uh, but, I mean, each of them, if you see, you know, one thing, common theme you will find is the risk reward, reasonable valuation, and high growth. And that is the key characteristics of our portfolio. And we think that if for some reason markets go down, uh, you know, these stocks will not be significantly correcting from here. And that's what resilience you want to build in a portfolio. And if markets were to go down and come back, these stocks will recover faster. Uh, their, their, their leverage in the system is very, very low. All right. You know, since you're talking about stocks, because just one name, I was trying to do some research, you know, JG Chemicals, it's moved big time, oh, very, very small. <laughs> <laughs> very, very small part. I mean, if you could comment on that. Actually, it's up 30, 35% after not moving for very, very long. I think it listed uh, a couple of years or so ago, and then it did nothing. And suddenly it's moved up. You know, if you want to just uh, briefly talk about that. I participated in IPO when nobody liked that company. We really liked yes. the company. And if you ask me again, we, we do believe that if we like the management, it's a fantastic management, uh, very driven people. It's a niche industry, so you've got to understand the industry. So we could do the work in detail when we understood the industry, like the people, did the background check, super people. So whenever we find this kind of combination, we don't mind taking a position ahead of others, you know, when markets don't like it. And we are, we don't mind, you know, and sitting on position for three, four years. I remember in one of the shows, we had, we had bought PCBL, Philips Carbon, at 100 rupees, and you had asked me, uh, this was, I think, probably two years ago, and that time, nobody wanted to buy that. Today, you know the stock is 500, right? So, you know, we typically like to, you know, be a little ahead of the curve, buy companies where we th understand the business, we understand the management, the risk rewards in favor. And this is one of that stock when we bought it was in favor and we'll continue to own it. Okay, all right, Vikas, I remember that. And thanks a lot for joining in and, uh, you know, talking about a few stocks that you'll have in your portfolio. Appreciate you joining in and giving us that. And what stood out for me was, you know, we are talking about the Nifty going up because 
uh, earnings will compound in mid teens you're talking about mid 20s so uh, obviously you know you're looking at outperformance in comparison to the benchmark as well for the time being we slip into a short break on the other side Nimesh is waiting for us he'll tell us what's going on in dealing rooms don't miss it Thank you for watching CNBC TV 18 and do follow us on all our social media platforms for news, updates and more.